So we're going to start right here with this block. We're going to start on this side, this block. So why am I taking my gloves off? I don't know. Because I hate gloves. <laughs> Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel um, I hope you're all having a good day or a good evening whatever it is for you it's evening for me it's probably like 6 30 now so I've been home from work for about an hour and I'm in the shop as you can see my shovel head is on the lift you can hardly see because I've not lifted the lift yet but Tonight, I'm going to start working on my oil lines. I want to get them off the bike because I'm going to replace the seals in the lines because the ones that I've got in there right now are just not really doing the trick. Um, I'm not doing like the typical flare fittings and uh, like compression fittings and whatever that people would normally do on their hard lines on their Harleys or their motorcycles or whatever you're putting hard lines on. Most people will do like a flare fitting. I didn't want to do that with my bike because we didn't want a rigid connection on the lines because a rigid connection is just going to make it so that those copper lines are more prone to vibration which is going to make them more prone to becoming brittle over time. We're using for the seals in my bike this stuff so this is oil and fuel resistant but the problem with this stuff is it's fuel and oil resistant but it's not high heat resistance so it's heat resistant to a point but it can't withstand like the high temperatures of my engine or any other air cooled motor for that fact if you're going to be putting it in your hard lines to seal your oil lines whereas this blue flora silicone is actually heat resistant up to like 450 degrees fahrenheit or something crazy like that so it's definitely good enough for what i need it for after my bike had been run for a season with these in the lines getting hot and cold and too hot for them the seals actually started to push out around the brass fittings so that's a problem because if your seals are pushing out from where you're trying to seal with them then they're probably not doing that good of a job sealing anymore i'm getting rid of this clear line and I'm replacing it with this flora silicone line that I ordered online actually it wasn't very cheap for this smaller stuff that I have right here it was about 13 bucks a foot uh, US and then for the larger stuff that I've got for my bigger oil lines that stuff's about $17 a foot US but if you consider the fact that you're only using like maybe half an inch of a to seal each line then uh you don't really you know it's gonna go a long way as long as you don't screw up cutting it so we'll show you guys how we do all of that and everything so that if anybody else wants to use this idea they can but as you can see this blue flora silicone is actually really malleable and squishy it actually feels like really good quality stuff but it's super malleable um it feels like it would de it's definitely going to give a really good seal on those lines. If you compare it to this stuff I was using, it's, it's not very malleable at all. So it gets pretty hard over time. Uh, just another benefit that you get from uh, using like this soft, soft seals like this rather than actual like kind of a compression seal is you will actually get a longer life from your hard lines, not just because you're not having that rigid connection and you're giving yourself a little bit of cushion in your connections, but because you don't end up having to squish your copper lines at all where the fittings go on. So um, you, if you have to replace the seals, you don't have to replace the whole line or anything like that. You could just replace the seals. That's how we're doing it on my bike and um, if anybody is interested in doing hard lines on their own motorcycle or if you already have hard lines on your own motorcycle and you might have to replace them one day then I would suggest doing it this way because I've been running mine like this for five years now or something like that even with those crappy seals that I've had to replace a few times and I've never had any issues with my lines becoming brittle or anything like that so uh, keep it in mind. 
Alrighty, so I've got my oil drained out and to start, I gotta just take off all of the mounts that are mounting my oil lines. So I've got all these aluminum blocks that I need to take off. And then I've got a couple other mounts just mounting the oil lines to the frame and other places like that that I'll have to remove before I can start actually removing oil lines. So we're gonna start right here. Temporarily remove the bell. Some oil lines are just way harder to get to. Like this one here. Like seriously, I've got like half an inch of space to work with. Yeah, none of these lines are even have to be done up very tight with uh, the soft seals in them. I don't have to do them up too tight at all. I'm not taking all my lines off. I'm only doing my oil lines. I'll do my fuel and brake lines when the bike actually comes apart because it's a pain in the butt trying to get all the lines off when the bike's together. And I don't need to replace any of the seals in the lines that don't get hot. This is the only time I wear pigtails. <laughs> this right here, this is my pigtail. Well, I could rather be grinding something brand new and not custom and unique, or I could be struggling with the woes of working on something custom and unique. Everything comes at a price. So before I go any further with what I'm doing right here, I'm just gonna demonstrate for you guys how I have this set up to actually cut these seals, just in case anybody wants to use the same idea for themselves. Okay, so I've got my hinge here with the slice cut in it, and make sure that you don't have a sharp edge or a burr where you cut this here. Hardest thing about it is just getting the hose to be actually straight in the hinge so that you don't end up with a crooked cut, but it is possible. You can just use the edge of the hinge just to line it up that way. So if you get it all flush, then keep it squeezed tight. It's a perfectly square cut. Well, probably not perfectly square, but it gets a good square cut. So that's definitely good enough to seal those uh, brass fittings. What I find makes it easier for me is just put a little bit of oil on the blade and that just helps it to slide through a lot easier. You don't have to worry about it binding up. So that's how I'm cutting those. Um, it's definitely not like the most ideal solution for doing these seals. Like if you have to make like a hundred of them or something, I only have to cut like a dozen. So it's just a quick, simple solution. So I've got all my seals cut and now it's time to just put them on the bike so that I can get this thing off the stand and actually ride it. I just wanted to show you guys how I'll be putting these seals in because anyone who's ever done an oil change, which I'm sure most of you have, knows that on that little rubber o-ring that you have on your oil filter, it's always good to just put a thin layer of oil on that o-ring so that you have a bit of slip when you're trying to do your filter up. So the same principle is going to be with these rubber seals. I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil, I've got a little bit of oil on my finger here, and I'm just gonna put it on the end of the seal that's going to actually be sitting inside of this fitting. So a little bit of oil just on the end of the seal, and then that's the end that's gonna actually go inside of the fitting there. And that's just so that when I actually go to tighten it up on the line, it's not going to be binding at all and it's going to actually uh, get a good seal because it's going to slip. It's not going to make the seal wrinkle up or bind at all. Put my fitting on my line, get the oily edge of the seal 
and pop that in the fitting there. And then I can just put that on the bike and actually start doing it up. So I'm just gonna start puzzling my bike back together and just uh, doing everything up. This shouldn't take too long, hopefully, but there are a couple tricky spots where it's really hard to get a wrench into. So it kind of turns like a one minute wrenching job into a half an hour of pain. Now that the bike is all back together, well, it's just time to top up the oil or well, fill the oil up, I should say, because it's empty right now. But before I end the video, I just wanted to let you all know where I got the floor silicone tubing from. It's from Mick Master Car, which I'm sure you guys must be familiar with. It seems like it's a pretty big distributor in uh, the US. I think that this came from California anyway. They seem like they're gonna work really well. Um, I'll know actually how well they work after the bike's been running. So also, just a reminder to everybody, I'm not a professional. I'm not telling anybody what to do or anything like that. I'm just telling you guys what I do. But yeah, anyway guys, so that's my disclaimer anyway. Um, like I said, I'm not a professional, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what works for me. If you want to use it, then you can use it. And like always, everybody, um, I hope that you liked this video. Thanks for watching. And um, if you liked what you see, or if you just like me, or if you like my bike, then like this video, comment down below and subscribe to my channel. And like always, all of my YouTube people, I will catch you all on the flip side. Peace.